Hi, I'm Sadie Sakio from Kashmir Lotoka. I like listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Akata Losana. I'm from Butua and I love listening to Gold FM. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Good evening, Fiji. In this bulletin, police investigate teens' death. 2020-21 budget focuses on restarting economy. And ILO suggests review of national employment policy. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. A community is living in shock and fear tonight following the death of a 13-year-old girl in Amara, Lambasa last night. The Year 9 student of Lambasa College was allegedly attacked with a knife outside her home at around 8 p.m. Eleanor Thrangai View has more. Residents of this quiet neighborhood of Namara in Lambasa woke up to news of a fatal stabbing at this home, where a mother and daughter have been renting since the start of this year. Neighbor 30-year-old Veniana Tombu says they are still in shock. It's hard to believe because we live just opposite them and we see her every day going to school and coming back home. It's scary that it happened to a very young girl. Police say the 13-year-old victim was hanging clothes outside her home when the landlord heard her screaming. Upon inquiring, the landlord found her lying unconscious at the door. There were visible stab wounds on her body. FBC News spoke to a few neighbors, but they refused to come on camera due to fear, as they say this is the first time such an incident has happened in their neighborhood. As a mother of two, I am scared for my children. Now we have to safely secure our home, especially at night. According to police, the 13-year-old was alone at the time of the incident. She was waiting for her mother, who was yet to return from work. Police cordoned off the home early this morning and are keeping watch over the crime scene as the investigation continue. Eleanor Turangai View, FBC News. A post-mortem was conducted today on the body of a woman found inside her Lamy shop on Tuesday night. Police spokesperson Ananai Soro says the investigation into the 35-year-old woman's death continues. The National Fire Authority was alerted to a fire in Lamy town around 9 p.m. on Tuesday. And when firefighters arrived at the scene, they found a room in the top flat of the shop in flames. The NFA says they found the woman in the two-bedroom flat. The victim was unresponsive and quickly taken to CWM Hospital, where she was pronounced dead. Minister for Infrastructure Chone Osumate says the focus of the new budget is to kickstart the Fijian economy. Osumate says while we are waiting for the tourism industry to pick up again, new construction will provide employment opportunities which will augur well for the economy. Lena Reese has more. Work on a number of capital projects will continue in the new financial year despite constraints in revenue due to the effects of COVID-19. In this particular case we have COVID-19, revenue is down. No tourists coming in, which is 40% of our GDP, so we've got to get ready, help the tourism industry get back on, on board, and at the same time, getting people back into employment. Obviously, construction, infrastructure is the way that we can do this. Usamate says the ministries under his portfolio will ensure funds allocated are used to the best of their ability towards stimulating the economy. There's a talk about uh, things that can be constructed immediately, get them going. That's why we talked about construction in the health sector, then we have the ongoing projects in our own ministry, roads with FRA, the water projects with the, uh, with the Water Authority of Fiji, so that is going to be the focus. Eh? Fiji Roads Authority Chief Executive Jonathan Moore says the increased allocation shows their work is recognised as they continue to better road networks. The work we're doing now in, in Suva, we intend to expand into other urban centres as well. As for a surprise, well, budgets are always a surprise to us. We're never quite sure what to expect. But uh, we're encouraged by this one uh, from our point of view, and, and yeah, they, we can work with it. Other capital projects that will be continued include the new maternity wing at the CWM Hospital, the construction of the Prime Minister's office complex, the completion of the new and refurbished police stations, new sporting facilities, upgrading of hospitals, and agro-economy projects. Lina Reese, FBC News. 
Major tax changes which have been announced in the national budget will bring back confidence as the Construction Industry Council. It believes the budget to some extent will stimulate the industry to ensure Fijians remain employed. Kritika Kumar reports. The Construction Industry Council says recently a lot of people were laid off. However, the sector is now ready to bounce back. Budget announcements, I think there is a lot of scope for businesses within the sector to start uh, hiring people and to actually read, look and rethink uh, in a more lean and mean fashion to um, start doing business, employing people uh, and uh, doing construction activity. A building permits evaluation committee has been set up to ensure all applications are processed within 60 days from the date of submission. The chief executive says this will ensure the projects are handled timely and efficiently. Gordon Jenkins says this budget will provide the much needed boost for the sector. But, but it will, it, it'll help and it will certainly uh, give a boost to the, to the workforce in the construction industry and uh, I think it's a, it's a good social re thing for all these people. At least they've got some uh, money to put food on the table. Meanwhile, any company constructing buildings for the government will be exempt from paying duty on all raw materials, machinery and equipment necessary for construction. Once that building is complete, the rent paid by the government to the landlord would be tax exempt for the period of government's tenancy. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. The International Labour Organization is calling for the Employment Ministry to review its national employment policy. The ILO Director for the Pacific says given the issues created by the pandemic, the policy needs to be reviewed to help create sustainable employment. Sainiani Boiler reports. Uh, employment policy According to an ILO assessment, five industries are severely affected, including wholesale and retail sales, as well as tourism would actually ensure this sustainable and uh, coordinated approach. What we can offer as an ILO, of course we can uh, provide technical expertise and guidance, guidance notes based on the experience of uh, ILO in other respective countries. Karimli says one of the ILO's recommendations is the putting together of a robust collaboration to help businesses during times like these. Right. What we observe, and uh, according to our findings, we think that there should be a compre comprehensive uh, institutional work that would support businesses and workers during this kind of crises. Monroe's law firm has urged that in light of the pandemic, the health of employees should be a major focus going forward. The big issue, of course, is that you have to now be very, very conscious of your employees' health. That should be their number one priority for everybody. And health does not just include their physical health, that also includes their mental well-being as well, given the increasing stresses and strain that everybody is working on. The ILO survey revealed that 66% of 84,000 workers surveyed are either on reduced hours or reduced working days. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. Up ahead, Minister assures education assistance will continue and CCTV installed at Raiwai Flats. My name is Shibu, I'm in Tabo Town, and I love listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM, it's hot. My name is Karki Kapdestan, Aura Bami, Mirchi FM, it's hot. Namaskar, I'm Alim, I'm Lambasa, I'm always Mirchi FM Suntao. Mirchi FM is part in Lambasa. Mirchi FM is hot. Parents have been assured that they will not be asked to pay school fees despite over a $17 million reduction in the ministry's budget. The ministry has received $450.6 million. Details with Pranita Prakash. Speaking to parents and students in Aitha City, Education Minister Rosie Agbar confirmed they will continue to assist students. I'm sure a lot of rumors and, and word would be going around or the budget has been reduced for the Education Ministry. Now our children will be asked to pay fees. Uh, this normally comes up. I can assure you 
that we will work with whatever budget we've been given and no child, no child will be asked to pay school fees. Your bus fare assistance will continue. Your free education grant will continue. The textbooks that we give to your children will continue. The education minister has urged school management to work with the ministry and the government. We will have to do some very, very stringent, prudent financial management. We'll have to use money where it is needed most. So if you're thinking of capital projects, please put a hold to it. Once economy normalizes, and then we'll work with that. The minister says while they understand that times are difficult, she is urging parents to ensure that their children attend school. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. The Public Rental Board has completed the installation of 29 CCTV cameras at its railway flats. PRB General Manager Patrick Veo says the cameras have been positioned to capture any suspicious or illegal activity on the premises. The board also recently signed contracts for cameras at the Nandera and Midroad flats. Kelly Vadala reports. As contractors install cameras in PRB property, there are discussions with police to receive the live feed to stations as part of the package. Our development people and uh, consultants, uh, contractors, they have looked at all areas uh, positioning the cameras so that we have a, a close uh, view of all the, uh, the, uh, the estate. Eh? So it is placed in such a way that uh, uh, we get a, a good view of uh, all the, the boundaries. Patrick Vu says they're closely monitoring activities in all PRB estates. I believe uh, the curfew and the current situation, people are not, uh, people are sort of abiding by the tenancy agreement. Housing Minister Primil Kumar earlier highlighted that some flats have been used for illegal activities such as drug dealing. When we give out flats to, to some uh, individuals who have teenage children, right, who are involved in drugs and whatnot, the rest of the family who live in that flat, they are scared. The acting GM view is urging all PRB tenants to adhere to the agreements and avoid any unnecessary breaches. Kelly Vavala, FBC News. The police commissioner has been offered a study placement in the Royal College of Defence Studies in the United Kingdom, becoming the first Fijian to attend the prestigious institution. Minister for Defence and Policing, Inia Serratu, says taking up the placement by Ngilio will depend on the current restrictions in place due to the pandemic. He says once details regarding Ngilio's flights and travel are confirmed, the government will go through the process of looking for a new police commissioner. He adds there are many candidates within the force that can take up the position. The defence minister says government will not want to waste this opportunity as this is one of the highly regarded institutions in the Commonwealth and the world. We need to continue to, to build capacity on our people and particularly at the uh, higher level of leadership. Uh, it's a uh, well-respected institute and uh, those that go through the, those institutes uh, have gone through uh, very uh, stringent uh, uh, criteria. And turning overseas a full fortnight after Victoria was forced into lockdown, the Australian state hit a terrifying high, reporting nearly 500 new COVID cases in the last day. The state's head blaming bad behaviour as mandatory mask rule comes into force. And Edwin joins us now with the latest in business. Thanks, Zaki. Coming up in business tonight, local company makes further investments and in growing Fiji, new school blocks to enhance education. Stay with us. Sambolaka, 
Radio Fiji One, nando moi viti. Welcome back. Leading business, Alhamd Smart Living, continues to invest in the economy. Today, it opened its Namaka warehouse and showroom as it continues to expand business. The company has come a long way from its initial establishment in 1970. Minister for Education Rosie Akbar praised Alhamd for always supporting the community. The branch of Alhamd will not only provide a wider showroom uh, that will cater to the different customer needs, but of course, emphasis on Fijian made products quality Fijian made products that will help to contribute towards the Fijian economy. Hong Kong airline Cathay Pacific has reached an agreement with Airbus to delay taking new planes. The airline says this will produce significant cash savings for the short and medium term. And Shoran from HFC Bank is here now with more from the trading world. During today's trading, the euro rose to its highest in nearly two years against the U.S., following EU's agreement on a 750 billion euro recovery fund. Meanwhile, a steady decline in the U.S. dollar has accelerated in recent weeks as the coronavirus outbreak intensifies and improving economic prospects in other countries are seeing investors switch to other currencies. At the same time, the U.S. Federal Reserve has said that it intends to keep interest rates at historic lows. The Fed is scheduled to hold a two-day policy meeting next week, so let's see if it can stir some investment demand favoring the greenback. And closer to home, the Aussie dollar hit fresh highs overnight despite the daily increase in new COVID cases and gloomy economic news. Australia's budget deficit has dropped to a massive $85.8 billion for the year ended June 2020 and is forecast to sink to $184.5 billion this year. And that's all from HFC Bank for now. Benaka. Turning now to today's local exchange rates as set this morning. Overall, the Fiji dollar was on the rise today. It gained against the Chinese yuan and the U.S. greenback, as well as the Kina and the Japanese yen. But it lost some ground against the Kiwi and Aussie dollars, as well as the euro. Commodities were up. Crude oil prices are nearing the $42 a barrel mark. Gold continues to skyrocket upwards at $1,867 per ounce and silver climbed to $22.81 an ounce. Two schools in Naitasiri, which were badly damaged during Tropical Cyclone Winston, were commissioned yesterday. The Vunindawa Sanatan School and Ndawasamu, Ndawasamu Primary and Secondary Schools were reconstructed with support from the Indian government with their Adopt-A-School scheme. Indian High Commissioner to Fiji Padmaja says following T.C. Winston, the Indian government had committed to repairing and rebuilding schools. More than $3 million have been spent on the construction of these two schools. After T.C. Winston, India, a committed development partner of Fiji, felt and shared the pain of Fijians. Apart from immediate relief supplies, India contributed to Fijian Prime Minister's relief fund and also supported rehabilitation of 20 schools in Fiji. That's it from business. Up next, it's Sports with Jamie. Naka Edwin and good evening in Sports Tonight. Former Flying Fiji and late to rest. And Nandi stuns by and VPL. This and more coming up. Come on, I'm Lavi Snarai. I'm Redo PG to Sunta. Redo PG to Skidar. Yeah, I'm at Abuwa Sahar. Se bol raha hu. Mera naam Sharma hai. Fir har main Radio PG to hamesa sunta hu. Jo Radio PG to desh ka dhar ka. Mera naam Chandra hai. Main Rakhi se baat karti hu. Ab Radio Fiji 2 Desh ki dhadkan The 
CFRU is expected to officially announce a new chairperson in the next few days. This is CEO John O'Connor confirms that Francis Skeen is no longer chair. Aquila Dama with the details. The FRE is expected to announce some changes tomorrow. However, CEO John O'Connor says Commander Keen spearheaded the major transformation we all now witness in the strategic direction, operations and management of Fiji Rugby. And the chairman's leadership has uh, been so many uh, uh, great achievements on and off the field. Eh? Um, starting with the Olympics and then uh, getting our World Rugby Council seats. O'Connor adds the changes we all witness today at Fiji Rugby is a testament to Commander Keane's passion, commitment and love for Fiji Rugby. I think the chairman has set a pathway for Fiji Rugby to continue to grow. Uh, we formed a lot of strategic, uh, strategic partnership with uh, other unions. We are almost uh, you know, finalizing negotiations on the, our participation in the Six Nations historically. Uh, we talk to New Zealand Rugby about uh, Super Rugby. Uh, almost uh, completing the pathways that we that we dreamt of uh, before coming to rugby. Commander Keane has been replaced by Conway Bag, who is the new appointee for the Prime Minister to the FRU board. Bag was a former national assistant coach and led the Lomaiviti club during their Suva Rugby Union dominance more than 15 years ago. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. The Suva Rugby management have been using former players in the last few weeks to motivate the side ahead of the clash against Nanronga. The two giants of domestic rugby meet in the Skipper Cup opener and first Fairbrother Challenge on Saturday at Lawanga Park, Singatoka. Aquila Dama has more. The senior players are doing everything they can to encourage this Suva outfit. All throughout our preparation, we try and motivate these boys uh, to go and uh, do something for Suva and also uh, lay the foundation well for us uh, throughout this uh, 14 rounds of competition. The new super coach says former players are being used as motivational speakers. Yeah, the challenge is great. Uh, we are motivating the players, trying to bring some uh, old super players to come and uh, talk to them and, uh, and uh, share their experience in uh, wearing the super jumper every week. Suva last wrestled the Fair Brother Sullivan Trophy from Nanrung at Lawanga Park in 2017. Two current Suva players, Ratumeli Kurisaru and John Stewart, were part of the team. Suva captain Sireli Lendua has reminded the players of what's it like to play the Stallions. We've uh, studied Nanrunga, uh, how they play, uh, uh, how we can defend them. Uh, um, and uh, we have uh, a lot of new players uh, coming up. Uh, we've talked to them, uh, uh, this is how Nanrunga play, this is the intensity of uh, how Nanrunga play. Uh, year in and year out. Nanronga will host Suva at Singatoka's Lawanga Park on Saturday at 3.30 p.m. You can watch the match live and exclusive on FBC Sports Channel on the Wallace platform. The live TV coverage will start at 1 p.m. with the women's game. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. Former flying Fijians prop Ale Foso Yaleala Tambua was laid to rest today. The funeral service was held at Faith Harvest Church in Bunivivi, Nausori, Yale Alatambo passed away at the CWM Hospital last weekend. The 2007 Rugby World Cup prop made his debut on May 19th of the same year in a 3-8 loss to Samoa. He played only one game at the World Cup against Australia. Yale Alatambo is the fourth player to pass on from the 2007 World Cup Flying Fijians team that qualified for the quarterfinals, the others being Tony Relomo, Maleli Kunavore and Siru Rimbini. The Nandi football team thrashed Mba 5-1 last night in their Vodafone Premier League Western Derby at Prince Charles Park. From the first whistle, the Jet Setters were in devastating form, controlling most of the match. They hand the men in black their second defeat in four days. Felipe Naikaso has more. The Avine Swami captain side was in devastating form and did not give the men in black any chance at all in front of their home crowd. Afras Ali opened the account for Nandi with a pal driver that zoomed into the back of the net. A few minutes later, Sakara Naisua headed in Nandi's second goal for a 2-0 lead at the breather. The man in black got on the scoring sheet after a handball by Afras Ali, Manasa Nawaikola closing the gap. However, the host had other ideas with Naisua grabbing his second at one each from Napoleon Ngasevakatini and Navnil Nand.
Yeah, we brief them uh, whenever bar starts play. I think uh, from the first whistle they go on, and then you need to keep the shape. Uh, I think Verity was outstanding in the first seven minutes, uh, which which helped us to win this game. For bar, they will have to do a lot of soul searching before their next match. We have nothing to uh, blame. It's uh, just the boys. We I am mean, disappointed with the loss. Um, uh, so many goals. It's 5-1. So we have a lot of areas to work on now. Ba will take on Lombasa this Saturday at 3 p.m. You can catch the live commentary on Mirchi FM on Sunday. Nandi host Suva at 3 p.m. Philip and Icaso, FBC Sports. 365 days to the Tokyo Olympic Games and the journey is not getting any easier for Team Fiji. Sports including archery, swimming, karate, judo, table tennis and athletics are yet to qualify with dates for qualifying events still to be determined. Tali Materkula reports. The biggest issue faced by Team Fiji is when and where qualifying events will be held. Getting their skills against each other here may not get them to that level where they need to cross the line to get to Tokyo, so they're badly in need of going to these competitions and to exactly know where these competitions will be held, how can they be factored into their schedule, so the time, the process of their timeline and how they can organize their timeline to see that they hit their target to Tokyo is a big issue at the moment. This will continue to be a problem with the uncertainty over the opening of international borders. At the moment, you should be, you, uh, the, uh, the sports, should be hearing where the qualifying competitions are being held. But there's no guarantee that they will be held in the countries if they're still in lockdown. The road to the Olympics doesn't get any easier with money in short supply. We're in a predicament, but I don't think Fiji is one of the only country that is in this predicament in trying to get their teams organized to make sure that we get across the line and we get across that line comfortably. Fasanok carried out a flag-raising ceremony today, marking the one-year countdown until the Tokyo Olympic Games next year. Tali Materkula, FBC Sports. The Warriors are facing an uphill struggle in their pursuit of Sonny Bill Williams. The 34-year-old says he will consult the Roosters first before talking with other NRL clubs. In today's play of the day, Liverpool finally lifting the English Premier League trophy after a lapse of 30 years. While they were confirmed as champions on 25th June with seven games to spare, they had to wait until their final home game of the season to be presented with a trophy. That match was a 5-3 win over Chelsea. In a near-empty stadium, the Reds lifted their trophy in front of their families, who were given special permission to attend the presentation. And that's it from Sports Tonight. In new media after the break, Snapchat misses user growth estimates. This and more coming up. Hola, my name is Salate. I'm from Navindami. We love listening to the FM. My name is Koko. I'm from Navarana. I love to the FM because of latest hit music and to the FM rocks. My name is Sulwetti, I'm from Nadaranga, today FM rocks. <laughs> New media tonight, Snapchat has reported better than expected quarterly results, but slowing user and revenue growth appears to have weighed in investors. And it's weather time now with Angie. Bula and welcome to the weather world. Warm weather dominated much of the country today. It is Friday Eve, so we have high hopes that the upcoming weekend weather will be in favor. Well, let's hope. Moving on to the other centers. In the west, it felt pleasantly warm. The temperatures raised a bit. A little rain will be good enough here as it's been pretty dry for some time now. Eastwards from Pakhavarusuva, the day had constant sunshine 
Let's enjoy while we can because Suba weather is always unpredictable. And up north, more sunny spells and less rain topic here. Looks like a good deal. At sea, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. Turning to the tides, high tide at 8.54 p.m. with low tide at 2.49 a.m. Sunrise at 6.36. For tomorrow, there is a weak low pressure loitering. So we might get a shower or two, otherwise our Friday will be awesome, just like its name. Tomorrow's temps, Savu Savu will be the coolest at 28 degrees, Suva and Nandi will follow suit at 29 degrees. And looking further on to Saturday, there is high potential of showers. Well, let's give credit to farmers as this weather will be beneficial to work on farms. That's all the weather news from my end. It's back to Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji Impulse tonight, we asked, are you happy with the reduction in the prices of alcohol? It is good for the public who are uh, using it, you know. And uh, this budget is very good. Yes, I'm good and I'm happy with it. And uh, uh, it's uh, good for all men, eh, that they can keep still at home. Happy for rich people. They can buy easily. For poor people, I, I, I think it's still going to be a bit hard for them. It's good for everyone and everyone. Yeah. Recapping the main stories for tonight, police investigate teens' death. 2020-2021 budget focuses on restarting economy. And ILO suggests review of national employment policy. Now for these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question we're asking this week, do you feel the new budget is going to make things easier in these trying times? Visit our FBC website to answer. And our shot of the day, taken from Matokana village in the highlands of Navosa by Isimeli Ndrovesi. Absolutely beautiful one. And if you have newsworthy pictures and videos, be sure to send them to us on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj. And share it with us on our Facebook page, FBC News, and follow us and tweet us on Twitter at FBC underscore news. That's your news for tonight. Until tomorrow from the team and I, stay safe, stay warm. Bye for now. Bula FM, Nambandua and Seri.